Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm going to be explaining the speed lab that you have the option of doing today. I gave you an alternative activity if you choose not to, but here's what you would do if you chose to do the lab. All right, so put your name at the top. The things that you'll need are this sheet. You'll definitely need a graph paper and you'll need something to mark a starting point and an ending point. You'll also need a measuring tape. I would hope that you have like a tape measure, like it's a little box and you pull it out normally and it's like a, it can go up to like 20 feet or 25 feet normally. If you have a smaller one, that'll still work, but you're gonna to need to be able to measure out a distance of between 50 feet and 100 feet. If you don't have a measuring tape, then you could use a yardstick and place the yardstick end to end to end until you get your distance to be between 50 or 100 feet or lastly the next best way to measure it would be to just take 100 steps so count your first step and then put one foot in front of the other until you get to the number 100 so one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, and you want to count 100 feet distance. But make sure that you mark that starting point while you're doing that distance measuring. The best place to do this would be outside, either on a street that nobody's driving on or at a field, or any place that you just have 100 feet and nobody's going to be interrupting you or possibly running you over. You'd also want a stopwatch. That's really important. You can use a stopwatch like on a physical watch or you can use your phone. You could use your phone stopwatch and just use the start and stop. And for one of the different types of measurements, you'll need to use the lap function. And I'll show you when to use that. If you can find a partner or a parent or a sibling who's not too young and you can trust them to either to do the stopwatch for you or to follow the directions and run at the correct speed, then if you can find a partner, go ahead and do that. Make sure that you measure your distance of either 50 feet or 100 feet. I would pick either 50 or 100 because those will make the math pretty easy. But if you wanna do like 60 feet or 75 feet, that's just fine. You're going to need to calculate your average speed after you do these trials. Make sure you answer the prediction question before you begin. Read the background vocabulary. If you don't remember the formula, that gives you the speed based off of the distance and the time. It's just take the distance you ran and divide by the time that it took you to run that distance. And you can go ahead and label your total distance right here. And your time, you can just put seconds your distance is going to be however long you measured your little course to be. This kind of explains how to do the experiment, and I'll let you read this on your own. To summarize what it says, you're going to do three trials for two of the different experiments. You're going to do three trials of walking your distance. So from the starting line, you're going to have somebody start the timer and say go, and then you're going to be walking until you get to the finish line, and then they would stop it and you would write down how long that walk took. I want you to do that same walk three times because it's not gonna be the exact same time every time unless you're using a very inaccurate clock. Record the distance that that walk was. Then use the space down here to do that distance divided by the time and you're gonna do the distance divided by the time three different times to find the average speed. When you're finding the average speed, you're going to do however long it was, so it's going to be 50 feet or more, divided by, let's say it was 8 seconds for you to walk that 50 feet. Then you would add that to your next trial. You did the 50 feet again, and it took you, maybe this time you walked slower, maybe this time it took you 10 seconds. And you would do the next one, trial 3, 50 feet again. And you, this time you divide by whatever your third trial time was. Um, let's say 
you walked even slower because this is your third time doing it, you're getting tired of it for some reason. And it's now it took you 15 seconds to, to walk that distance. You would add all of these together in your calculator. You can use your Chromebook or you can use your phone to add these together and then divide by three. So this is going to give you a number and then you're gonna to need to divide that number by three and that'll be your average speed. That's how you're gonna find your average. After you get all of your walking trials done, then you're gonna do a jogging trial or any other run. You can run at any speed, but you're gonna to try to run at the same speed each time. And it needs to be, it should be a run. It doesn't have to be a sprint, but it should be a run, which means somewhat fast. You're gonna do that three times. And then you're gonna calculate your average speed of your run the same exact way we just, I just showed you for the walk. So you'll divide the distance by the time. You'll do that division three times, add those fractions together, and then divide that answer by three to get your average speed for the run. The final part of the lab is going to be an acceleration trial. For the acceleration trial, that means you were not going at the same speed the entire time. For part of that trial, you're gonna be walking, and that's what I wrote here. For the acceleration part, you're going to split your total distance into three sections. When you split that total distance into the three sections, that means you're gonna have your start, section one, and you're gonna to need to put a marker down here, something so that you can see it and so that your timer can see it. And then another third of the way, you'll put a section two and make sure that you can see that and your timer can see that too. Or if you're the same person, you'll just make sure that you can see it. And then you'll have a section three, which is the end, which is the same distance as normal. So it's the same distance, but you're gonna cut it evenly into three parts. You're gonna start your timer at the same exact starting point, and then you're gonna walk. Once you get to the end of the first section, you're gonna push the lap button, and then you will start to run. Once you get to the end of the second section, you'll push the lap button again, and then you'll sprint. Once you get to the end of that section, of that distance, you're gonna push the stop button, and you record that final time. This total time is the time that you'll put in trial number three for the acceleration. The lap one's time is the time that you will put in trial number one. In trial number two, you're not going to put the lap two's time. You're going to add together your lap two time with your lap one time. Whatever lap two plus lap one is, will be what you write right there. So this time should be the shortest time, this time would be in the middle, and this time would be the ending time. To find the average speed for this ending part, I want you to do it the same way that you did in that previous assignment about uh, Jesse Owens and how he found his speed in between each interval. So you'll find three different speeds for the acceleration. You're gonna find the speed that it took to get to that first section, then you'll find the speed from the first section to the second section, and then you'll find a third speed, which should be the fastest speed from this second section to the ending point. This should be the easiest part of the lab, and that's just making three different graphs based off of the time it took for each thing. When you make your three graphs, they should look something like this. You should label the title of your graph, you should label the x-axis of your graph, which should be distance, you should label the y-axis of your graph, which will be the time that it took you to finish, and the most important numbers on that graph are going to be the number zero and the number 100, or however long, however long the distance that you marked out was. For the walk and for the run, you will only need the starting distance and the ending distance, which is zero and whatever it was, for the acceleration, you also need to make sure that you label the first third and the second third. So if you went to 100 feet, you would put a marking at 33 feet and at 66 feet. Your time is going to be however long it took. You look at your total time that it took you on your clock, and then you want to make this taller. Maybe the longest it took you is 18 seconds, so you would want to make the maximum 20. Maybe for the run, it only took you 10 seconds, so you would make the maximum of 15. 
on the acceleration, maybe that one was your fastest one. Maybe on the acceleration, it took you 10 seconds. So we'll put this maximum as 12 seconds. Then you would split your axis evenly for each graph. I would want you to do this on graph paper so that way it would be better and it would be easier for you to make these intervals evenly. And for these two graphs, pretty much the only points you're going to be drawing on them are the origin and some ending point. Because for these two runs, you only mark the ending time, you're going to have your times all be at 100 or wherever the end of your graph is. For the acceleration one, you're going to have your first time, and that one should be the closest one to zero. Then your second time should be a little bit higher, and your third time should be a little bit higher. Then you're going to use your calculator to calculate the line of best fit. Or, for this one, I want you to try the line of best fit, and I also want you to try a quadratic regression. For this acceleration graph, I want you to tell me, using the correlation coefficients, whether the line of best fit or the quadratic regression was the more accurate equation to choose. Once you have those graphs done, answer the questions, and turn it in.